Welcome back to my tips and tricks videos for Skype. Um, in this quick little tutorial, I'm just going to show you um, some of Skype's basic privacy settings. When you install and start using Skype and have Skype, you know, on your, sitting on your computer after a while, you know, after you've got a few contacts and that, you may start finding that, you know, random people may um, start trying to call you or send you instant messages through Skype. Um, it's because once you're, you've been using it for a while and, and people, you know, search the Skype database, as I showed you in the previous video by clicking here, they can type in your name or, or username or something, that you do get people who will randomly try and contact you. Remembering that there are probably now hundreds of millions of active Skype users. So it's like a very large country. And so you get good people on Skype and you get not so good people on Skype. So how do you sort of protect yourself a little bit from getting unwanted calls or unwanted instant messages on Skype? Well, let's go to the tools menu and click on that and click on options. And we open up the big options menu and I'll just rise it up here and if we go to privacy now when you look at privacy it's, it's fairly basic you know there's not a lot it's not lots and lots and lots of options so it's a fairly simple um, privacy setup allow calls from anyone which means you know people either in your list of contacts or outside your list of contacts can call you I mean it's quite straightforward anyone who has Skype can call you unless you've already um, blocked them. So um, the next option is people in my contact list only. And again, that's straightforward. It's just in my case, if I had that on, it would just be this group of people here. No one else could call me, could, could initiate a call with me. And um, automatically receive video and, and share screens with, again, um, you know, do you want to automatically receive video from anyone who happens to be using Skype or people in my contact list only or you don't want anyone to to um, to send you videos or to screen share with you. So you've got those three options there. Again, it's anyone, people in my contact list or no one at all for that. And it's basically the same with IMs, instant messages. You can have anyone on the internet using Skype can send you an instant message or only people in my contact list. So um, again, it's really up to how open you want to be. If you're using perhaps Skype for a business, you may want to, for at least at the start, allow anyone so that, you know, you're potential clients can contact you. If you're just using it with family and friends, you may want to tick, you know, people in my contact list. Now, if you tick people in your contact list, that doesn't stop anybody from sending you an invitation, a request to be added to your contact list. Some people get confused and say, why are people inviting me um, to add them to their contact list? And I've said people in my contact list only. If you blocked people sending you invites, you'd never get any new contacts. So, or you never have the possibility of getting new contacts. So that's why that option is always available. So, so you will um, get people saying, please add me to your contact lists. But if you do, you can, and you don't know them, you can just say no, and they won't be added. And if you've got people in my contact list only to allow calls from, they won't be able to sort of call you and say, why didn't you add me to your list? The other option is the other little couple of other privacy things here. I'll just go through very quickly. Allow my online status to be shown on the web. Basically, the, all this means is Skype also offers an option where if you've got your own website, you can add or embed a Skype button into it, which will show people whether you are online or offline. So if you had a business website, you could have a Skype button and people could go to your website and go, oh, he's online in Skype, um, I can call him. And yeah, you could use it for a bit of tech support if you're offering a sort of a tech support service. So if you want that, 
then you need to have this ticked, allow my online status to be shown on the web. If you don't use the sort of web buttons or anything, it doesn't really matter, but just untick it if you um, are concerned about it. Except Skype browser cookies will really, again, Skype doesn't do anything different with cookies than any other website that issues cookies to your browser. So I, I leave that on because taking it off probably causes more issues than it's worth. You can, again, clear Skype cookies from time to time if you want to. Um, the other area over here, keep history, this will keep your history of, you know, the IMs, instant messages you've got, who's called you, when and where, all that sort of stuff. You can either have it for forever, you can have it from forever, three months, one month, two weeks, or no history at all. And if you get it quite a bit of history built up and you want to get rid of it, you hit the clear history button. All that does is clear all the history. Now, who called you when? Who left an instant message? Who did this? Who did what? So it's basically your history. So you could leave it for forever or whatever and then just clear it every so often. But if you want, you've got the options for how long Skype will keep your history for. Um, the other one is blocked contacts. Now, um, I'll just move this out of the way a little bit. And a blocked contact is if you someone, maybe you've added them to your contact list or maybe they've, you know, you've got, uh, your privacy settings so that anyone can call and someone's being a damn nuisance calling you and all that. So I'll just use this as an example. If if my other account was being a damn nuisance and I wanted to block this person, I would right click and click block this person. In other words, it stops them. It deletes them from your contact list and it adds them to a block list. That person can no longer call you send you instant messages, and I don't think they can even request to go back on your um, contact list. And basically, it blocks them. So mark as I would say, block this person. So if you've got a person, if you've, if you've added a person to your contact list and you've, they, you found out later that they're, they're not the person they said they were or whatever, you can block them. You can, you can also just delete them from your contact list as well, remove uh, from contacts, but that won't stop them from seeing your online status and all that. But the blocking will. And if you go back, if we go back to the options screen here, and I was um, in privacy settings, you've got blocked settings, and any people you've blocked, their usernames will appear here. And if you want to add someone, again, you've got another option, you could click and add um, blocked people from here as well. But these are where the blocked people are and if you and if you've got a list of them and and you you may have blocked someone by mistake you can unblock a person from here so you just click I haven't got anyone in this account um, but if you had a list of, of blocked users and you could click on one of them and click unblock it will unblock them and um, so if you've done something by mistake you meant to just delete a contact or, or did something and you accidentally blocked them you can you can always unblock them. So that's your sort of the basic privacy settings. And always remember, once you have changed anything in this privacy setting, remember to click the Save button. Um, if you do change a few settings and you get yourself confused, you can also click Reset and it will go back to the default settings of when you installed Skype. But it's really quite simple. There, there's not a lot of Skype settings here. There's not like a million sort of settings to uh, for privacy. Um, it's it's fairly straightforward. You basically will, will allow anyone to talk or communicate with you or only people on your contact list. So for a start, you could leave it with anyone and just see how you go. If you happen to start getting unwanted calls, just go into your tools privacy settings and change it to people on my contact list only. And hopefully that will stop most of the uh, any harassing calls or any spammy calls that you may get. The only other issue is that of course, you know, the really hardcore spammers and that do you know create multiple Skype accounts. So sometimes it's a bit like, you know, um, dealing with email spam. But I've, I've found over the years that um, it's not too bad in Skype as long as you just have the settings um, set to the way that it suits the way you use Skype. 
So that's it. I hope that you found this useful. And um, please, if you again, if you found this via my YouTube channel, just click the like button. And if you haven't already, click the subscribe button and you'll automatically get notifications of the next lot of videos.